In last week's TOK talk, I discussed briefly about the timeline of inventions throughout human history, and how each invention represents a leap in scientific knowledge and discoveries, and furthers our understanding of the natural, physical world around us. If you haven't seen that video, find the link in the description, or click here to find out what the history of natural sciences looks like in 24 hours. Today, I'll be focusing more on the history side of things. And discuss exactly how natural sciences, as an area of knowledge, evolved in our history, the pioneers in revolutionizing science, and the significance this evolution brings. We will be looking at the history of natural sciences all the way from the beginning of humanity to the present day. Ready, set, go. For our ancestors and early humans, the need to understand the world around us was driven by our innate and natural sense of curiosity. We explored our surroundings, investigating things that interest us, and share our learnings with others in the community. This level of natural sciences is almost instinctive, and very much similar to the knowledge that animals have. Driven by curiosity and needs, we understood things that were necessary for survival. We learned to distinguish between harmful and harmless animals, between edible plants to poisonous ones, and we learned to control fire to make clothing. Grow crops and domesticate animals, things that we discussed in the previous TOK talk, inventions that allowed our ancestors to survive and outcompete other animals. Through exploring, we also gained a basic knowledge of our surroundings, the basic form of geography. We understood what was around us and learned to find a way in the wilderness. This is referred to the natural science of the pre-literate society, where our knowledge of natural sciences were crucial. And a necessity to our survival. Soon afterwards, when we started recording and writing our history, things started to change. As we started to build civilizations with tools to defend ourselves and ways of sustaining ourselves, we started spending more time on arts and sciences to keep ourselves busy and to satisfy our curiosity and quench our everlasting thirst for knowledge. By 3500 to 3000 BC, we developed natural philosophy, which were way before the natural sciences as we know it came to be. The Egyptians that developed the first recorded natural philosophy showed interest in astronomy, math, and other aspects of the natural world, but their work was nothing close to being scientific, and were done mostly on a religious and mythological basis. Similarly. China, as one of the oldest civilizations, also developed similar interest in the natural world and developed methodologies to investigate it. Taoist philosophers and alchemists paved the way for experimental sciences, as they were the first to attempt chemistry through alchemy while looking for the elixir of life. Alchemy is an early form of chemistry and led to development of the field for many years to come. Their understanding of the world was based on the yin and the yang, the harmony between light and dark, male and female, and other opposites as such. In terms of metaphysics, dealing with the principle of our world, they developed the concept of elements. Though not as accurate as we have it today, they thought that the world was composed of five elements in a cycle of creation and destruction, where an element destroys another and gives rise to another. The five elements, fire. Water, wood, metal, and earth were used to explain many phenomena of daily life, and they showed an attempt to explain natural world using theories and models. India, another one of the earliest civilizations, also began developing natural philosophies at the same time. Similarly to China's natural philosophy, their understanding of metaphysics also involved breaking it down into elements of earth, wind, and fire. As well as water and empty space, they also performed many complicated surgeries that led to a very detailed and sophisticated understanding of medicine and the human anatomy. In ancient Greek, about 600 to 400 BC, things took a different turn. Instead of focusing on natural philosophy, philosophers moved away from gods and mythology. And brought natural philosophies a step closer to science, though it will continue to be referred to as a philosophy and not a science for the next 2,000 years or so. These changes give rise to the earliest forms of science and mathematics, 
and they developed a systematic methodology of science closer to the current one, focusing on cause and effect. Things started to change when a certain Greek philosopher started his philosophy, Aristotle. As one of the forefathers of Western philosophy, he also played a big role in the development of natural sciences. Not only was he involved by writing books of his finding on the natural world, especially of biology, through observation and experimentation, he also paid close attention to the natural world in his philosophy and developed inductive reasoning to study natural philosophy. He approached natural sciences in a theoretical way, not a practical one. But his influence and philosophies will forever change the way we do science. His philosophy and theories sparked an era of scientific discovery, and natural philosophies evolved and developed in Greece. During the medieval times, around 1100s to 1600s, Greek works of natural philosophy were translated into Latin and reached the West following the development of European civilizations. A much advancement occurred in all fields of natural philosophy, which will soon become science as we know it today. In 1600s, a series of events led to the scientific revolution that forever changed the nature of natural sciences, stepping away from natural philosophies and into modern-day science. The Protestant Reformation altered the influence of religion on society. And the invention of the printing press made knowledge and science more accessible to all. And many works of science has been translated from Greek to Latin. The invention of the telescope and microscope allowed us to discover things big and small, and greatly increased the impact and influence of science in society. Christopher Columbus discovered the New World, forever changing our views of the world around us. Though he did not prove the Earth is round, that was a misconception. His discoveries. Increased our scope and understanding of the world around us. Galileo proposed the heliocentric model of the solar system, furthering our understanding of the universe. Several prominent philosophers, such as Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, and Francis Bacon, rejected Aristotle's approach to natural sciences and started to develop a new way to study and investigate science. Everything changed in the 17th century when Newton came into play. He was one of the most influential scientists of all times, and his development of the scientific method reformed the Aristotelian models of inquiry and methodology, and formed the framework for all future scientists. He put emphasis on collecting repeatable measurements and experiments, coming up with hypotheses and using data to explain outcomes, and making theories and proving them or falsifying them with evidence from experiments. The scientific revolution turned natural philosophies into natural sciences as we know today. In the 19th century, more branches within the natural sciences developed, each with their own institutions and professionals. In 1834, the word scientist was coined. Now that the framework of natural sciences is set, development happened in each field like a tree bearing many fruits. Natural sciences is currently divided into life sciences and physical sciences, and each branching off into hundreds of different fields, each undergoing much development. All starting from our innate sense of curiosity and our need to science.